Hello everyone, it's the weekend. Welcome to Mass United Insurance's Line and Length. It's the cricket program where we look at the sport, not only in the region, but internationally as well. Hello to all of our friends on Digital Sports Max. I'm Barry Wilkinson. Andrew Seeley is with me. The topic for the entire week has been about this, this man. man. <laughs> Shiv Dharine Shandapal. Unceremoniously, some say, uh, booted out of West Indies cricket. Andrew Seeley. Unceremoniously? 164 tests later, Shivnar and Chandapur, just short of Brian Lara's record. Mm -hmm. Should he have gone? Should he have been pushed? What? We'll hear more tonight. That's right. We're going to talk about Shivnar and Chandapur, um, his career, and look at, as if, look at if he was unfairly uh, asked to leave the West Indies team in a manner that's not desirable of how we should treat our heroes. A man who has not already coached him but has done a lot of work with him is going to join us on the program tonight. And we're also going to delve into that uh, West Indies Cricket Board town hall meeting held in Barbados and also hear from the chairman of selectors Clive Lloyd and Phil Simmons, the head coach. We have an action-packed program. Mass United Insurance's line of length about to begin. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. Welcome back to Mass United Insurance's line and length. With us to discuss this entire Shivnarayan Shandapal issue is a man who would have bowled with Shandapal and bowled to him at some point in time. Um, I don't mean to make you sound so young, frankly, Stevenson, but I, I'm sure you had a hand in, in some kind of coaching of Shivnarayan Shandapal. The main question is, many people are saying, yes, they think Shandapal's time was up, but the manner in which it was done. Your thoughts on the issue? Well, you know, I think that... Uh there comes a time, you know, and Sandy Paul has been, what, he's 40 years old now, he's been in cricket for a very long time. I think he himself would put his hand on his heart and say that he hasn't been his best in the last uh, couple of series. And, you know, you've got a new coach in place and the team needs to start making some strides. And I really think that they need to pick the best team. And for the arguments to be saying that um, Sandy Paul should be given uh, a series, you know, I don't think that it's something that you actually give away. I think that as an experienced player, you are actually mandated or you have mandated yourself to be um, a cornerstone for that team, whether it's just with your performance or as a role model, as a, as a, as a, a mentor inside of the team, you know, and I don't think that that's been the case with Shandy Paul, you know, of late. And so I think that uh, the time is coming. You know, I'd back the selectors. I, I can understand, you know, the public saying, oh, he's been a great servant and it would have been nice to see him or to know or to get a feel that this was his last series in some way. But I do not get the feeling that that's the type of person that Shanti Paul is that was going to be announcing his retirement after any series. Oh, Frankie, if we look at the whole question of some people's view that Chanda Paul has been a selfish cricketer, not someone who could be viewed as a mentor for younger players in the team, is that, is that perhaps part of the reason why the selectors were, I, I would want to suggest, perhaps forced into the position that they took? Well, being selfish in cricket is not the worst, a worst uh, attribute that you can have, actually. You need to, you know, put yourself first in some cases because you can go out there with a great team and just think I'm one of the boys and so on and then when it's looked at you say but you know your performances haven't been at the scratch and so you need to have those performances under your belt so first is the self and then you know you can give it to the team or, or you know for the team as, as second. Um, I understand your point when it comes down to Shandy Paul for instance being shown up as batting with the tail end and you know we all have seen in the Caribbean way 
it's easy for Shanti Paul to get a single, and that single came off the first ball on a regular basis with number 10 and 11 at the crease, you know, so, but, you know, it's been the thing that you need to perform, and he has done that over the years, and for the last two series, he hasn't, and the West Indies need performances out there, and if not, they need to be building a unit that's going to bounce it off themselves, you know, to become that really uh, solid unit that will, you know, put performances together in the future. And I think it's the right time for the new coach to be, you know, if they think that the players are being chucked in at the deep end, then fair enough, you know, but Shadow Paul hasn't produced in the last couple of series, and, you know, I think it's time. You know, you look at the fact that uh, Clive Lloyd said he tried to have an audience with Sean Paul. The messages that have been released, uh, or at least the, the, the correspondence that we've been seeing, indicate that um, he was, there was an effort to get him, uh, pinpoint a time for him to say, enough is enough, I'm going to retire. But that never happened. However, uh, Sean Paul seems to be saying now that he was prepared to retire after the Australian series. So contrary to what has been said about him uh, never going to retire, he seemed pretty well uh, said that after the Australian series he was, going, he was going to say goodbye. My main question is then, li listen to what Michael Holden said, should a player have a farewell series in, in spite of how great we think he, ha he, ha he has been? Well, if you look at it in the context of India and Sachin Tendulkar, I mean, for my one part, uh, Sachin Tendulkar would have been strong for India having six or seven or eight farewell series because every time he walked onto the field, there was that fan fear. The, the fans were there to throw everything in, and, and he was still performing. You know, the thing was just for him to get hundreds, not just to go and average 25 or 30 or 40, that would help his team. And he was part of a very strong unit. Shidnarai Shantipal does not have that as a, a you know, a norm as a standard right now in the Caribbean. And it's all about performance, f performing and going onto the field and being the best for the team. And so I don't believe that a player uh, should be choosing for that. I think that you should be trusting in the selectors to be doing the right thing and the management. And you then apply performances to it and left, leave the job to them. There's also the argument, Frankie, that uh, there's nobody knocking down the door. Uh, we, we are getting rid of Chandler Paul to replace him with um, perhaps what may be called no name brands at this stage. Nobody's knocking down the door. One good season here, a century here, a century there. So we are getting rid of uh, potentially our best batsman in the team, quote unquote, uh, to replace him by someone who has not really knocked down the door. Your thoughts? And my thoughts are you've got some very bright youngsters that, you know, they have a lot of good solid basics about them. And if you think that they're not coming too fast enough, then you look at the coach and ask they can get rid of some of that. Because, <laughs> you know, you've got a light that's going out mm -hmm. and you've got a spark that, you know, could be that a massive flame. That, yeah. I mean, where mm -hmm. are you going to go? Where are you going to go? <laughs> well, gonna go for that spark that's going to, that, that, that you've got a chance to be in the flame and put the trust in your coaching staff to, to really, you know, find the best. Um, to raise that fire. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What did you find was a good attribute then about Shadow Paul? What made him so special and unique? His, his grit and determination, you know, he was a fantastic, he got in there and he fought and he, you know, he didn't have the best looking technique out there. He let the ball come to him and he wonder, oh, it's got a ball. No, his bat was always there, very, very sharp eyes. You know, he saw the ball late, let, let the ball come to him and play his shots. But now that's not quite happening. You can see that he's not picking the ball up. We had the English here bowling at 83, 84, 85. And that was giving Shanti Paul some problems, you know, picking, the, you know, getting the ball off him. And so it's going it to, it would only multiply then with the Australians coming and bowling a lot quicker and bowling, you know, being a tighter bowling unit in a sense. So there comes a time, you know, Shanti Paul will still go and get runs in first class cricket sometimes. He'll probably get a, a, a one or two decent scores as well. But it won't be for a very long period either. You know, and so you've got to be looking at the future. And if he's failed in the last two test series, it shows that the chinks have arrived into the armor. And, you know, I'm sorry that everybody that's leaving the test, test arena seems to be leaving under some huge cloud or, you know, but uh, I, I guess that's the way it is. Maybe it's best if you don't go in that you don't feel <laughs> too if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're like Franklin <laughs> Stevenson, <laughs> never called, so in fact, never chosen. <laughs> oh, all right, interesting stuff. When we come back, on Mass United and Shoots' line and end, we're going to put the Shannon Paul issue to rest for a bit and talk about the Pepsi IPL final because the West Indians again had a massive role to play. When we come back on Mass United and Shoots' line and end. <laughs> 
Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. So we had the Pepsi IPL wrap it up last week Sunday. It was the Mumbai Indians versus the Chennai Super Kings. But you know, those two teams have significant meaning for West Indies fans because on one side in Chennai, you've got Dwayne Bravo, you've also got Dwayne Smith, and then on the other side, you have uh, Kyron Pollard and uh, Lendl Simmons. So it's kind of a bit of a West Indian flair. And what do you know, those, two those four players all had a tremendous impact in how the final was played. We look back at some uh, memorable moments. I'm gonna to talk to these two gentlemen. My best player from the West Indies in that final was undoubtedly Lendl Simmons. Well, no doubt, right? And I think the best player, even though Dwayne Bravo won the purple cap for the most wickets, I think in terms of impact on teams, <laughs> Lendl Simmons coming in, not at the 11th hour literally, but the injury to Aaron Finch opening the way for Lendl Simmons to be a permanent member of the Mumbai Indians, and it really, and it really paid off. I, I think he's guaranteed at least another IPL year. Indeed. Mm -hmm. your, your thoughts on Kyron Pollard's impact as the kind of player that he's come into the uh, IPL as uh, some five years now, he's been very consistent for the Mumbai Indians. Yeah, so not only with the bat in the sand, but especially a fantastic fielder, <laughs> and I think he's his attitude to the game really brings the team uh, a great wealth in, uh, as well. So, you know, he's going to be around for a long time. They know what he can do. He's a dangerous batsman in any circumstance in those short versions of the game. And so, you know, it augurs really well. I've seen a couple of the teams really hell-bent over going towards total Australian imports and then so many uh, uh, New Zealand imports as well. They were the flavors of the month. But again, mm -hmm. the West Indian boys came through and showed that they were true performers and uh, you know seeing what happened in Barbados over the last couple of weekends with the 2020 I think that we've got some uh, great uh, exports down the line to, uh, to these international T20 tournaments. I want to talk a little bit about Dwayne Bravo's bowling because his batting did not come off this season but his bowling to me has strengthened again. Your thoughts on Bravo as a bowler um, particularly at the death because Donnie loves him at the death but Generally, he's got the purple cap, most wickets in the tournament. Your thoughts on, on, on Bravo as a bowler? You well, being a former top bowler yourself. <laughs> yeah, Bravo always had a lot of slower balls, and I think very often used them in the wrong context. Because <laughs> early in the innings, and you bowl slower balls to batsmen, they're looking to pick ones and twos, so they're watching the ball a lot longer, and so it's always going to be tough that you bowl, you change the pace. You bowl now, instead of bowling a little outswing, as you bowl an off break, you don't have a feel set for that. So the batsmen looking to be more watchful and pick the ball, they will catching on that very easily but then late in the innings when batsmen have decided you're walking back to your crease they've already hit you for four sixes because they've decided that no matter where you bowl they're going after the ball that's when the slow balls really uh, come in I think that he's gotten a lot smarter you know his pace hasn't hasn't uh, improved in, 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 uh, but he's maybe decreased a little bit but he's gotten a lot smarter you know like to pick the batsmen and the balls he needs to bowl and it showed with him you know getting the purple cap and he's been very consistent picking those wickets up and he really looks a danger. He still goes for a few runs, but those wickets are very important to put checks on, on, on batting teams. Now, Dwayne Smith, Andrew, um, got a half century in that final, but his batting fell off towards the end of the tournament. I mean, that half century was a reminder of what he's capable of doing, but you, you generally feel a sense of, a little sense of disappointment with how things went for Dwayne this year at the CSK. I think uh, of the West Indians who have emerged as the players uh, involved in in perhaps the majority of games, as, as he was part of the four that played in the majority of games for their teams, he would be the biggest disappointment. And, and certainly, I, I'm not sure what has gone wrong because within the last year, 
his form has really petered off and, and, and it must be of some concern to him having retired from the longer version of the game it means that he's now only concentrating on t20s uh, and perhaps some 50 overs but his concentration is now on t20s and if he wants to continue in his cricketing career for another couple of years he certainly needs to improve perhaps it has something to do with his fitness i i'm, I'm not a fitness expert but it seems as if he's not fully fit his fielding has gone off and that was one of his strengths uh, when you looked at him and Pollard and Bravo in the field and Simmons they were all excellent fielders but now Smith is way below them yeah he dropped a very easy catch oh it was uh, uh, it was unbelievable yeah, and, uh, no and, 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 and Bravo was not happy no. <laughs> who, who would be who would be but you, you think Mumbai generally have shown that they are the kind of team that Despite a rough start, they think they lost the first five games. First five games they lost, uh, yeah. Do you think that they're the kind of team that showed their, their metal within the tournament? Was that an accurate reflection of how well they played? I would think so, yes. I think, uh, you know, it's uh, how long you can keep that streak for, in a sense. I think that uh, they really got a joke when they lost the first five. And they turned it around, they kept it going, you know. So the momentum was with them. They had the confidence that if they can get past those five, you know, they, they were so happy and they were high. And they kept going, and I think that uh, they've got a wonderful bunch of players that gel together. And that's what brought it home for them. Frankie, are you a, a, a T20 fan? Because I know you would have, you would have watched because we we asked you to to come on the show. But are you a big T20 cricket fan? Yes, definitely. I'm a cricket fan. You know, I think cricket is a great game. I think it's you know, you know, great community and communal game. And right now, with the sort of money in cricket, I mean, you know, you look at. The Indian Cricket Board, there's no way they can spend the sort of money that T20 has given them. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how are you going to spend that? I think after the first two years, they had, what, six point somebody, was it or seven or eight billion dollars that they were given over. And that was after the first two years, they made money hand over fist. So it has brought a wealth to the game. And I think it's, if they use it well, you know, that the game has got a, a great future ahead. Not only the T20 game, of course, but uh, no, I like I, I I like T20. You know, you give any team, if it's 60 overs, 50 overs, 40 overs, each team has the same amount of overs to play and the same rules. And I think that the game of cricket is strong for it. All right. Great stuff. Franklin Stevenson, I want to thank you. Uh, when we come back on Mass United Insurance's line of length, we're going to go into the West Indies Cricket Board's town hall meeting and hear what are some of the things that the people of Barbados are asking the president, uh, Dave Cameron, and also his vice president um, uh, at that town hall meeting at the UWI. We're also going to hear a little a bit later on uh, from Clive Lloyd, chairman of selectors, and uh, indeed Phil Simmons, who is the head coach of the West Indies team. All this to come, so stay tuned. You're watching Mass United Insurance's Line and Length. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. any bitterness. I think um, he would come, he'd realized that the time is come at 40 years old. It's obviously not going to be in the same shape as you, you were 20 years ago. So, and if you've seen him play, you, you notice that there was uh, a decline and it's, it's, it's no doubt about that. Because people find it very difficult at times to, to retire um, or, you know, have a, a, a period where you you will not be doing as well. So the, we just thought that here it is, we must now make a decision. We made a decision and um, we are looking towards the young people that we have. We have a lot of good young cricketers and I, we think it's time that we, we now inject the, the youth into, into our cricket. Did you and your fellow selectors weigh the uh, possibility of Shadipur getting the additional seven runs to become the head of the 
Asbestos. Oh yes, we we've taken that into country, but that that should never be the sole thing. Why you want to choose somebody? Um, you know, as as you noticed, he's been given quite a lot of games really to try and get probably close to that, and he hasn't even looked the part. Uh, considering that it's series against Australia, it's just a rather brief series, two tests, four innings. Was there any consideration given given to allowing Sean the ball to maybe use the series to, to I mean, split up and miss these four tests? And it's not a particularly long series to say, well, you know, he's going to have to endure you know, a five test series. Was there any consideration given to just let him play the two, the two tests against Australia? And maybe save the bike to the Caribbean with something in mind. Well, you look at you look at things like that, and you you talk about giving him two tests to finish to say goodbye. He's had a long and illustrious career, and we know that he's done a lot for West Indies cricket. But at the same time, when we sit down to select a team, we sit down to select a team to win a game against Australia, to play the, the two tests in the series against Australia. And when you go through that, the process. He didn't. He didn't fit in. So it's not about giving someone two tests to finish their career. It's about picking the best team to to play in the next game. The, the West Indies cricket board president Dave Cameron he said recently, as recently as last week, that um, he wasn't necessarily pleased with how previous player players have great players, um, their careers ended, how they've been treated at the end of their careers. Could this be considered as shabby treatment for Sean it, it, it depends on what you consider to be shabby. I think. Players before were not recognized and lauded for their performances. But to say, well, look, you had to play two test matches for me to lord your performance over 164 is no sense. We have a mandate to lead, guide, and direct the operations of cricket. But we all think that it's important to hear what you have to say. Uh, and we get some of these views through blogs, um, but we feel it's more important to sit down and talk to you all. Um, as we attract a wider audience uh, in cricket, one of the challenges we have, and we had our marketing and business development meeting today, is how do we attract new fans? How do we grow the commercialization of the game? And how do we, most importantly, ensure that we continue to win cricket matches. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Barbados for the wonderful wicket they provided for us so we could beat England. Um, it's, it's been a long time since we've drawn a series, um, and certainly we are very happy about what happened in Barbados. I am particularly honored to be back as president for a second term. And my team and I are embarking on re-establishing West Indies cricket as a centerpiece in the Caribbean, aimed at more positive results overall. Um, we've undertaken a number of initiatives. Uh, the governance, uh, you'd have heard, we've agreed with the Prime, Minister, Prime Ministers of the region to have a governance review, and we can talk a little bit about that. Um, as I said, we had a marketing and our first marketing and business development meeting today. And we have a number of initiatives that we'll be announcing soon. We have a, a compliance and risk management area which has been in place for the last two years. Uh, and that unit is headed by Don Webby, who is the CEO of Grace Kennedy Group. Uh, and we have legal minds on that committee and some of the leading business persons in the region. We've actually um, we also have a governance, an internal governance committee, and your own Dodridge Miller, which is the CEO of Sagicor, has agreed to serve on that committee, um, and we'll make a formal announcement about that very soon. We're all, always working the technical development at all levels, our players, coaches, curators, umpires, and officials, and I'd just like to ask Richard Pybus to stand, please so everybody can identify. Richard is our director of cricket, um, and is that person responsible for the, our technical development um, on West Indies cricket. So ladies and gentlemen, simply, we are here. Um, we believe we have an idea of how to take West Indies cricket forward, but we are certain that we do not know all 
the answers. So that's it for our show this week. Continue to send your tweets and also some emails. We want to hear uh, your thoughts on this entire Shiv Devine Shan Nepal uh, debacle. And we want to thank Franklin Stevenson and all of our guests on the program earlier. Andrew, next week, the first test starts with the West Indies and Australia in Dominica. We're going to have a special show from there. Well, certainly Dominica, a special place and a special place for you as well. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> we wouldn't say why, but yes. <laughs> So, next week, from Dominica, on to then, this is the Mass United Insurance's Line Alec. Bye-bye for that.